All right, boys, so I'm starting on a tougher project today. I'm gonna tackle the valve cover gasket on the Z4 E89. So this is the N54 engine, if you guys haven't watched the previous videos that I've made. So this is not going to be any way a how-to, but you're gonna be able to see how different the N54 and a Z4 is from the other cars when doing a valve cover gasket. So it's just my first time ever doing a valve cover gasket. I've done a oil pan gasket on a different kind of car. It was a Toyota. So I don't really have much experience in this, but I'm gonna see how it goes. And I'm also actually gonna do injectors. So I'm swapping out the injectors that are in here for index 10s. I wasn't able to get index 12s. They're just way too expensive. And index 10s are gonna be a big upgrade for this car anyways. So we'll just see how long they last. And I know I'm going to have to do some coding to those index 10. So I'm going to take a picture of each of them before they go into each, uh, each cylinder here. And then I already did the spark plugs previously. So there's, those are just going to be cleaned up, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes and fingers crossed everything goes well. Okay. So far I just have the beauty cover off, so I haven't really done much. Just taking off the beauty cover. So that's how I'm going to start for now. And I'll take you guys in the back. The car's been sitting for a while, but every now and then it randomly adds fuel to the rail. So I still might have fuel coming out of the rail, but I disconnected the battery. And uh, that'll help. So because my key is nearby, it senses the key and uh, primes the rail. So I won't get squirted with uh, fuel here. Start off. I'm going to work my way from here back. That's going to be my plan of attack. So I'm going to just loosen this wiring harness here. I'm going to get that loose and out of the way. It's going to, this will not be able to be moved, but that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to unclip it on this end and mine's broken, but I'll show you here. There's a clip here and a clip over there. I don't have that clip. So I'm just doing this one. And since that's gonna be quick, I'll tell you the other quick step too. I'm gonna to start on these oxygen sensors. So I'm going to label that the gray one goes to the back and the black one goes to the front so I don't get them mixed up. But I'm gonna take these out of the way. And then since uh, that's gonna be quick too, along with that, I'm gonna start on the first rail and loosen that. I'm going to also take off this cross brace on this end to free up more room. I'll leave that one on, but I'm going to take this one off. So far, I have this unclipped here. I put aside the oxygen sensors way back there so they're out of the way and all the cables that were in these clips. So I'll find myself removing a lot of the cables that are neatly tucked here for to be organized in a certain way. They'll go along the edge, so even in the back of the engine too and on this end. So no, these are out of the way now. I loosen this one so it bled the fuel. Now to re entirely remove this fuel line here, I'm gonna hold this bottom nut here that goes to the injector while loosening the top one. And then I'll do that all down the line here. So. Now that all those rails are off, before I can remove the actual fuel rail back here, I'm going to disconnect the, the connector back here. So then after I disconnect that connector, I am able to remove these bolts down here that hold on the fuel rail. So it looks like there's four of them. So I'll go down the line and do those after I disconnect the connector and I'll be able to lift this out and go to the next step. These plastic clips were a pain to get off. I was able to get two of them off and uh, keep them intact. The third one, I actually broke it, so that sucks. But two is better than none, so that's good. And uh, I got all the bolts off. And it's ready to come off except for 
right here. This is exactly why this isn't a how-to. <laughs> so I ended up grabbing a bolt and I put it back in the end here because loosening this was a pain in the ass and that just made it a lot easier and so you don't bend anything and mess anything up by just putting a bolt at the end and now this came on undone pretty easily. So I'm gonna loosen this and then that will be it. Next thing I'm gonna do is remove the PCV valve here. Um, so I have a catch can, so mine looks a little different, but I'm going to be getting this out of the way. And then once I get that out of the way, I'll be able to move on to the injectors here. These grounds are gonna come off first and then I'll start pulling off these connectors right down the line one by one. These should just come off really easily, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. Just I'll pull to the side a bit and they should just come right out, so these shouldn't be very difficult. So I'll go ahead and do that, but you can already see all the oil right here. All right, scratch that. Mine was a lot tougher, so I actually had to use a pick and pry just a little bit on this clip here so I could release these so just be really really careful take your time but it worked out for me with the pick but yeah that goes to show you know there's always some issues that come up that you don't expect and for me I didn't think these were going to be that hard to take off and they were so I got all of those taken off here all along down the line the next step is the reason that we took this off is because if you take a look here, you need a very long 10 millimeter socket in order to loosen that. So this just frees that up so that you're able to loosen all of those down the line. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the socket that I have, which, which are here. So I have my super long sockets here and I'll use that to loosen those. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and I believe that's an E12, but those are also going to be loosened up. And there's one all the way along the back. Okay, so we have all those things out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go through the uh, coil plugs here and remove each of those. But just to show you guys here, I'm trying to be as organized as possible. Just makes everything easier. But I have the fuel rail and connectors, everything lined up as I've taken it off, including these brackets that I told you guys about that were the E12s and those little nuts that go on the connectors. So <clears throat> these are staying in here for now, but I'll show more of that later. So I'll go ahead and disconnect all of these and then move on to the next step. All right, so we're getting closer and closer here to being able to take off the actual valve cover. Um, so the next step is to remove these bolts here. There's just two of them so that I can move all this wiring back and get it out of the way. What I'm thinking as well as doing that is trying to get some of these lines here out of the way too. As you can see, they're all organized just like the other side that we did. Uh, I might pull these back as well so that I can get more room here so you can see I did do that behind the engine, but now those oxygen sensor wires are tucked in there. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not taking up too much space, but I'm gonna try to give myself some more space. But for now, I'm gonna remove this uh, wiring out of the way. All this is now free that I got those two bolts out. However, for this Z4, I don't believe this is the same for the other vehicles, like a 335i or a 135i. I ended up disconnecting these two connectors here and they're pretty easy to remember where they go because they're right here, right next to each other. Uh, just be careful when uh, trying to loosen the clamp here 
It takes quite a bit of force. You maybe cup it underneath so you don't lose these clamps. And that's what secures the connections. So now I'm just gonna try to maneuver this and try to get it out of the way. And I'll let you guys know what I end up with because we're getting really close to removing the valve cover. So this is pretty cool on the Z4. It was a little bit of relief. So sometimes when working, we all get that little bit of relief that makes us feel better about the job that we're doing. And for the Z4, it was this loom. Like I thought maybe I was gonna have a hard time maneuvering out of the way so that I can get this uh, valve cover off. But look at this. I was able to actually just push it to the bottom right side of the valve cover because all the cables and everything reach over. So it's completely out of the way now. It's just over here. Um, just be really careful and make sure that everything is not pinching anywhere or um, caught on anything so you don't break anything. But look at this. That just clears up so much room. It makes this job so much easier, even though I'm still worried about uh, doing the valve cover itself because it's just a little intimidating. But yeah, we have access to all the valve cover bolts so we can start removing the valve cover. I would really like to remove this cross member bar, but I do not have the socket for this. So that sucks. But, I mean, I can reach my hand over here, so it won't make things too hard, but we'll see how that goes. I'm going to go around and start loosening the valve cover bolts so I can get this out. I ended up just running to Harbor Freight and getting the proper e-torch for this uh, brace. So, whatever. Just making extra room. Wasn't too bad, and I just covered this while I was gone. Okay, so the plan is... I'm gonna go ahead and actually work on getting these cylinders out for the spark plug. It's gonna help clean up everything easier. So I'm gonna try to work on getting these cylinders out. There's little pinholes here. I'm gonna try to use a pick and try to pull on one side and then the other and try to get all of these out before I start cranking on the valve cover. I keep saying, I'm getting closer and closer to removing the valve cover, but I keep finding other little things to do. So I wanted to tell you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean this up as much as possible from all this debris. You can see all the cylinders are out, but I wanna try to go ahead and do the extra step of cleaning this all out. Uh, I think I'm gonna use a vacuum here and try to get as much of it I can out. All of the bolts are loose. So I just went around, all around, and loosen them with a ratchet just to get that torque off and then I went around with the Milwaukee gun and uh, just zipped them off really quick they're still in here I think I'll keep them I'm gonna keep them in here until I get the valve cover off then I'm gonna go through and clean the valve cover as best as I can and then also try to clean the surface of the head here just to get the best contact with the new gasket. So I'm gonna have to go and get a uh, trim removal tool to pry on here. You don't wanna pry with metal. I'm gonna do it with a plastic one and try to get this valve cover off. All right, she is out. So just be careful, obviously, when you're pulling it off, make sure everything's loose. Uh, some of the bolts may still be in a little bit too um, make sure you unthread them all. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to take it off once you pry the edges and get the gasket to come off. But yeah, I'm going to take a look at everything really closely, really clean everything up. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get the new gasket on here and then put on the head here. But also, like I said, cleaning the edge, all the surface, to make sure we get a good seal. Uh, another thing is, so when I'm wiping on, on the surface, I'm gonna make sure to wipe away from the engine, same with uh, on this edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean everything up. When you have the gasket pulled off of the valve cover, uh, make sure you inspect all the areas for any cracks or anything. 
which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the light closely and just follow every edge and see if I see any cracks or anything before I spray it off and clean it and uh, get it ready for the gasket and do the same with the head. So I have all this cleaned off as best as I could. I'm trying to hurry up and get this uh, valve cover back on. Uh, you don't want to take too long, but I also have the gasket fitted on here. And if you get OEM, it should stay on and it shouldn't be a pain. Uh, mine's staying on, but we'll see when we flip it over and try to put it on the actual head how it goes. But yeah, I'm ready to put that on here quick. Cover is on. I started the corners. So I started this corner, hand tight, that corner, this corner, and then that corner. So it just crisscross. And then I did the rest of the bolts alternating uh, with the impact gun, but on the lowest setting. So just also pretty much kind of hand tight. So everything is even and it's ready for uh, the torque sequence. I'm not an expert, so I have to look it up and then I'll be back to do the proper torque sequence so that I can finish this up and then go to the next step. Also, I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and show you guys me putting everything back together backwards of how I took it off because I am going to do my injectors, so I might end it there. I'll see how far I get or... I should say how far I can get before I put too much stuff on where it's just going to be stupid of me to just take it back off to do the injectors, but I'll let you guys know. There are a ton of torque sequencing maps online. Uh, many different people do different ways. I just used FCP Euros, uh, the YouTube video that they posted. I followed theirs, so you can look that up and follow their sequence if you want or follow a different one. So this is all torqued down, all good to go. I do have a shitty torque wrench, so tomorrow I'm actually going to double check all of these with a digital one. I'm just gonna go out and buy a digital torque wrench. I should have done it earlier when I went to Harbor Freight. I put too much faith in, my, in this one uh, that I got from Harbor Freight. I'm an idiot, I shouldn't have. You know, you can't cheap out on the more uh, precise tools like a torque wrench with Harbor Freight. These absolutely suck. The only one that I really trust is the wheel one. And even that's kind of iffy. But you know what's funny? I actually, before I try to use this torque wrench and try to torque down something very important that would have really screwed up my entire day, maybe my life, I tried it out on here to make sure that it was torquing the right amount, so I loosened this mounting bolt for my expansion tank, and I tried to torque it down to six foot pounds, and it wasn't working, it actually broke it. So now I have to tap that out and get a different mounting bolt to put here. I mean, it's still sturdy, which is cool, but I'm just thankful that it wasn't a valve cover bolt that would have snapped that would have been just awful so i mean that was something if you if you do have a click torque wrench try it on a different bolt and see if it's tightening to the right amount before you go and try it on something like this i already started clipping in the o2 sensors over here so just to have more clearance when we were cleaning the head of the uh, where the valve cover was going on I unclipped these two so I clipped them back in I'm gonna go around and start to uh, make sure everything is going where it's supposed to we still have to drop the cylinders back in here I'm not sure how I'm gonna get those back in there they were a pain to take out so that's gonna be an issue as well but like I said, yeah, we're only going to get so far here. So I'll show you guys what I end up with. So in order to get these tubes back in here, I'm going to, I made sure to face these two pinholes towards me. I already got the other five in. This is the last one. 
but I just used a mallet and a screwdriver here, a flathead screwdriver to lightly pound these in. So pound one side and then the other very lightly and they'll go in right away. Should be pretty easy doing it that way. But yeah, I'll get this last one done and then talk to you guys. I went ahead and also connected the fuel rail here. So I got that on. That was the four bolts here that went across. And I also made sure to tighten that onto the fuel rail, the fuel rail connection to the actual engine. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw these clips on too while I'm there, just so I don't forget. But that is as far as I'm gonna go today, guys. Uh, just because I don't wanna take away room from me being able to go back with my with a digital torque wrench and torque all these down just to make sure that they are all torqued down to the right spec and so I can sleep at night. Well, I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight, but all the other nights. <laughs> so yeah, I'm um, sorry I'm not gonna be able to show it all, but I'll put back together. Um, it's gonna stay like this. I wanna make sure to cover everything with rags here so nothing gets in the open areas. So yeah, I'll throw those clips back on and then I'll show you guys when I cover everything with the rags. I got everything still out and organized. Uh, I got everything that I wanted to cover up covered. But yeah, hopefully I get that tool tomorrow so I can finish this up and be done. And then I'll be making the separate video on the injectors and coding them as well with Pro Tool on Android. Uh, we're going to have to code those into the vehicle so it accepts the new injectors. They're not new. Well, new to this car, index 10 at least. But that's what we got for today. All right, so I hope you guys find this video helpful for the Z4 and it helped you out with this platform. So doing the valve cover gasket on this specific car and how easy it is with the openness of the engine on the Z4. So sorry I wasn't able to put it all back together so you'd see the end result, but it'll help you guys if you watch the injector video of me doing the injector so you could see that process as well. And like I said before in my other videos, there aren't very many Z4 videos on YouTube. So hopefully some of you find this information helpful and it helps you with your car and to see what you're gonna be taking on if you do any of this. I'll catch you guys on the flip side.